Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video on how to add and subtract polynomials. Um, I'm just going to do a few quick questions with you, problems with you, so that you get the idea right away. Feel free to write down the problems along with me or just kind of follow along and see where it goes and then rewatch as much as you need to. So we're going to find the sum and difference of two trinomials and we're going to do this a few times. Um, some would need to find the answer when you add the two trinomials together and differences, of course, when you want to subtract them. Um, in our first problem here, we're adding two trinomials. The first trinomial says 7y squared plus 2y minus 3. The second trinomial is 2 minus 4y plus 5y squared. And it's telling us to add these two together. Now, when we add any polynomials together, the parentheses really don't mean anything. So we can actually just drop the parentheses. What you'll see here is I rewrote this problem and I just got rid of the parentheses. They're not needed. Okay, adding something together doesn't matter if it's 3 plus 4 or 4 plus 3. You wouldn't put a 3 in parentheses and the 4 in parentheses. They just don't change anything for the operation. But now what we want to do is we want to combine like terms and put our polynomial in standard form right from the beginning. Standard form means we work with the highest exponent to the lowest exponent. So when I look at this, I have 7y squared plus 2y minus 3 plus 2 minus 4y plus 5y squared. The highest exponent, the highest degree here is 2. So I'm going to look at my 7y squared plus 5y squared, and I'm going to add those together first. 7y squared plus 5y squared would give us 12y squared. Remember, when you're adding like terms, you're really just working with the coefficients. The exponents are not going to change. I always say to my students, what's well, two orange, two oranges plus three oranges? You would say five oranges. You would never say five oranges at squared or five oranges to the third power. You would just leave it. So then if 2x plus 3x is 5x, then 2x squared plus 3x squared is 5x squared. The exponent stays. You're just working with the coefficient. Next. After I deal with my squares, I will look at my exponent of 1. I've got a positive 2y and a negative 4y. Positive 2 minus 4 is a negative 2y. Lastly, I look at my constants, which are just my numbers. A negative 3 and a positive 2 add up to give me a negative 1. If I gave you this uh, polynomial, I would ask you, what kind of polynomial is it? You would tell me it's a trinomial. If I asked you what's the degree of this trinomial, you would say it's 2, because 2 is the highest exponent. And if I said to you, what's the leading coefficient? The leading coefficient is 12. It's the coefficient of the first term in standard form. Now we're going to take these two trinomials, and instead of adding them, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to subtract them. We're going to find the difference. So you can see they're identical to each other. I just changed the plus sign to the minus sign, and you're going to see I do that in the next few problems as well. When we are subtracting, the first set of parentheses, which is grouping those three terms together, is kind of unnecessary. But the second set of parentheses is incredibly important. What we need to know is that we're not just subtracting two. We're also subtracting a negative 4y, and we're also subtracting a positive 5y squared. So if we know that, that we're really subtracting everything in the second parentheses, it's really using the distributive property, which is what my arrows should really kind of indicate to you. If I'm subtracting 2, that really means minus 2. If I'm subtracting a negative 4y, that means I am adding 4y. And if I'm subtracting a 5y squared, then I'm really subtracting 5y squared. Notice, I never told you to bring down any signs. I never tell my students to do that. You simply distribute and bring down your result. Distribute and bring down your result. Now we have to combine our like terms in standard form. So we work with our highest degree, which is still exponent of 2. 7y squared and a negative 5y squared. And just to kind of guide us along, I'm going to underline them. A 7y squared and a negative 5y squared would combine to give us 2y squared. A positive 2y and a positive 4y would add up to give us 6y. And then lastly... A negative 3 and a negative 2 combined to give us a negative 5. What kind of polynomial is our result? 
a trinomial? What's the degree of the trinomial? Two. And what's my leading coefficient? It's also two. Next set of problems. Same concepts, guys. Same concepts. We're going to take two trinomials. We're going to work on adding them, and then we're going to work on subtracting them. So what I told you before in the first problem is that when you're adding polynomials together, the parentheses are irrelevant. They don't mean anything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite this expression without the parentheses because they're really just grouping terms together, which aren't really necessary here. I now want to combine my like terms in standard form, so the highest degree to lowest degree, a 4x squared minus 7x squared. 4 minus 7 is negative 3, so negative 3x squared. Then I'm going to take a look at a negative 2x plus 3x. Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1x. And then lastly, I'm going to take a look at positive 7 minus 9, which is negative 2. This is, again, a trinomial. It has a degree of 2, and my leading coefficient is negative 3. Subtracting. First parenthesis can get dropped. Just the first one. It's not important. It's not really helping us with anything. But now we want to make sure that we're distributing our negative. So if we're subtracting a 3x, that really means we're doing minus 3x. If we are subtracting a negative 7x squared, that means we are really adding 7x squared. And if we are subtracting a negative 9, that really means we are adding 9. So now, 4x squared and a 7x squared combine to give us 11x squared. Negative 2x, negative 3x. Always notice I put the sign with that term. Negative 5x. And then lastly, we have a positive 7 and a positive 9, which give us 16. I have a trinomial degree of 2, leading coefficient of 11. Last two problems for us today. Okay, same idea. We're going to be adding these uh, trinomials together and then subtracting them. I just need to squeeze myself over into this corner. So if I'm adding these two trinomials together, we know that we can just simply drop our parentheses. They're not adding or giving anything to this problem. We're now going to add them in standard form. So I look for my highest degree. What would you say is my highest degree here? If you said 4, you are correct. So a positive 8y to the 4th and 9y to the 4th give us 17y to the 4th. Then I would look at my squareds. 6y squared and positive 2y squared give us 8y squared. And then lastly, a negative 5y and a negative 7y give us negative 12y. It's a trinomial with a degree of 4 and a leading coefficient of 17. Last one, we're going to take those two trinomials and subtract them. First set of parentheses can get dropped. They don't really do anything for us. We make sure we di distribute this minus sign to each of the terms in that next parenthesis. So if I'm subtracting a 9y to the 4th, then if I'm subtracting a negative 7y, it really means I'm adding 7y. And then if I'm subtracting 2y squared, again, I'm subtracting 2y squared. I'm going to combine my like terms in standard form. So positive 8y to the 4th minus 9y to the 4th would be negative y to the 4th, really negative 1. Then I'm going to look at my next set of terms. 6y squared minus 2y squared, which gives me 4y squared. And then lastly, I'm going to take a look at negative 5y and positive 7y, which would add up to give me 2y. And this last one, again, is a trinomial, degree of 4, leading coefficient of negative 1. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Take a look at my other videos if you need any help.